SQL Server 2008 supports backup compression that allows you to shrink the size of the backup files that you create. And moreover, it allows you to speed up the time of your backups as well as your restores. And the way it does that is by just reducing the amount of I.O. that's necessary in order to perform the backup. And I'll show you how to do this on this database, AdventureWorks DW2008 4M, which is a variation of that database that I'm using. And if you go to Tasks, you'll be able to find Backup. Now, to enable compression, you click on Options. Down at the very bottom here, you'll see there's a, ch a few choices for types of compression. You can either use the default server setting, compress it, or not compress it. So right now, this default setting is set to, to non-compressed backups. I'm going to choose compression, start it going. And this is going to take a little while. So in a second, I'm going to pause the the recording here and you'll be able to see uh, the the final result in a, when I resume the recording later. All right, the re backup is almost done. There we go. Now, one thing you do have to remember about backup is that it is affected by a couple of different things in your environment. One is data compression. So if your data is already compressed, some of the redundancy in the data is already eliminated. So when you back it up, it's not going to compress it as much. Uh, so um, for example, if you've compressed your database, um, you may have shrunk it to be about one third of its original size. And then you back it up, you may shrink it maybe by half again. Whereas if the data is not compressed originally and you back it up with backup compression, you'll probably get a factor of five to six compression when you create the backup. So uh, that's just sort of the nature of compression. The more redundancy there is in the data, uh, the easier it is to compress the data. In addition, uh, backup compression does interact with transparent database encryption. If you turn on transparent database encryption on a database, the data, uh, when it is passed into the backup system looks sort of like random noise, which really is not compressible. And uh, in the long term, we would like to make those two features work together so that um, you can effectively compress um, encrypted databases. But at the current time, that's not possible. If you want to get really good compression, you need to decrypt the database first. So you could theoretically for, uh, decrypt the database compress the backup and then encrypt the database file with another program if you really needed to shrink down the backup size and have the, the backup encrypted. Long term, we'd like to integrate those features. So that concludes our discussion of backup with compression.